Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm looking at Cockpit Startup for Beginners looking to fly the Fly-by-Wire A320neo. There are a lot of incredible videos already on YouTube to go into details on how to make your cockpit prep as realistic as possible. But instead what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to cover only what you absolutely need to know to get the plane running properly. Alright, with that said, let's jump into the cockpit. Alright, so I launched a sim and the flight that I've been using to learn how to fly the airplane is in Southern California from Ontario down to San Diego. I chose a gate nearest to my departure runway and I'm pretty much ready to hit fly. I don't do any flight planning from the world map for the fly-by-wire A320 because it actually doesn't follow through into the airplane. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to accomplish the same thing a whole lot easier with something called Simbrief. Once the cockpit's booted up, the first thing I'm actually going to do is turn on the electronic flight bag, which you'll often hear referred to as the EFB if you watch a lot of airliner videos. And it's going to have a few tools that are going to help us throughout the flight. There are lots of settings in here that you can change and configure, but the main one for right now that we need to worry about is the controllers. If you're like me and you're switching back and forth between flying GA airplanes and airliners, you're going to want to start by going into the controller menu in Flight Sim and make sure that you create a separate profile for your controller for flying airliners. I've got the Thrustmaster Airbus Captain's Pack, which luckily comes with a preset that works with the fly-by-wire A320 out of the box. I'm pretty sure this gets added when you install the airplane, so there might be some presets for other controllers as well. I'm just not sure because I don't have those other controllers. So make sure to go through the list of all the presets you have. And if you see one called Fly-By-Wire, the odds are it's going to work right out of the box for you as well. And you won't have to do what I'm going to show you in a couple of seconds. If there is no Fly-By-Wire profile, you'll want to go into the preset manager and just create a new one. Once that's done, you're going to go back to the EFB and what we're going to have to actually do is configure the detents properly. So you're going to do that by clicking on the little cog to get into the settings to go into sim options and then click on calibrate detents right here. The detents are the notches on the throttle that you can see if you have a look at it. So I'm just going to move over there right now to show it to you. You can see there's a detent right here at the toga position with that little arrow. There's one for the flex position, one for the climb position another one at idle, and another one for the reverse positions as well. When you're flying the Airbus, you're almost always going to put it in one of these detent positions. It's very rare you're going to have to move the throttle around during your flight because the airplane's going to control the throttle automatically for you. This is very different from flying a GA airplane, and it doesn't really take much getting used to, but you really need to know about it because otherwise when you're just getting started, it can be really confusing as to what's going on. To configure the descents, what I suggest is that you start from the reversed full position. You set your throttle where you want it to be for reverse full, and then you just click the set from throttle button. That's going to automatically save it so that the next time you boot into the sim, you don't have to do it again. You'll have to go through and do the same step for each one of these detents, working your way up the throttle all the way up to the toga position where you'd probably want it just all the way up to the top on your throttle axis. I also recommend that you make a mark with a permanent marker on your throttle if you don't have detents listed because you're going to want to be able to move the throttle to the right position without having to constantly look down at the throttle in the cockpit. Next, I configure my camera views so that I can switch back and forth between the cockpit views and the wing views very easily. I covered how to set this up in the previous video and I'll add a link to it in the show notes if you need it. Alright, with all that done, now it's time to bring the airplane to life. A neat thing that you can do on the EFB is if you click on the little truck, you can actually call for the passenger air bridge. You can open the doors, call for a luggage truck, call for a fuel truck, call for catering, open the aft door. And when you switch to the external view, you're actually going to see animations for all of that. This all comes stock with Flight Sim by default, so you don't need any additional add-ons to do it, which is pretty neat. That said, you don't actually have to do this step if you don't want to. Somehow the passengers and payload and fuel still find their way on board, even if you don't do this step. Before I start flipping any switches inside of the cockpit, the first thing I actually do is make sure that on my controller, all of the switches and axes are in the right position. Usually they will be, but it happens sometimes after a flight that I forget to reset them. So it's a really good practice just to make sure that everything on the controller matches what you're going to get in the cockpit. 
That includes making sure that the throttle is at the idle position, the flaps are up, the speed brake is completely retracted, the engine switches are off on my controller as well, the parking brake is set, and I make sure that the mode is set to normal right here between the two engine switches. You can get in a whole lot of trouble if the switches on the airplane don't match what's set up on your controller, so make sure that those are done properly. All right, let's start bringing some power online by going to the overhead panel and turning boat batteries on. At this point, you've got a choice. You can either turn on the external power by pressing this button right here, and external power seems to always be available in Flight Sim no matter where you are, at least from what I could tell. The other option is you can turn the APU on and skip the external power step if you really want to. External power means that the airplane is connected to the ground by a wire that's going to give you electrical power. And APU is the auxiliary power unit that's actually at the back of the airplane that's going to allow you to get all the power to the cockpit as well as run the air conditioning if you need to. It's probably a bit more realistic to use external power until you're a little bit closer to your pushback, but both options are available to you and feel free to use whichever one you prefer. Personally, I like to do both right away since it's one less thing to worry about later on in the startup procedures. So to do that, I'll turn the external power on and I'll wait a couple of seconds for all the power to come on. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn the APU on first by pressing the master switch to on. And at that point, what you've got to do is wait until a flap open message appears on the screen right here. And there it is. So now I can go back up here and I can press the start button. The first few times you do start the APU, it can be pretty cool to go to the external view, get into a tight shot right here of the APU, turn up the sound, and you're going to hear a really nice sound effect as the airplane is turning the APU on. All right, while the APU continues to start up, since I have the external power on, I'm gonna continue walking through my steps and I'm gonna turn the crew supply on as well as turning on all of the fuel pumps so that that's done for a little bit later in the procedure when we're looking to start the engines. With that done, the next thing I do is I turn something called the ADRs, which is basically the redundant GPS systems that are used to precisely tell you where the airplane is at any given moment in time. You want to send all of those to the nav position. Lastly, I'm going to turn the brightness up on both of the displays right here by twisting this knob. I wish this setting persisted from one flight to the other, but it doesn't seem to, and you need to keep doing it every single time you start a new flight. There are two other brightness switches for the screens at the center here, and you can adjust them right here. And again, I'll just set them to about the halfway value. There are a few other details that you could do, like turning on some lights at this point. But strictly speaking for the sim and your first tries at having a go at getting the airplane to start up and configured ready for a flight, you don't need to worry about them and you can just focus on the flying. And finally, there's something else called the MCDU, which is this guy right here. And this is really what we're going to be looking at in the next video where I cover how to program your flight plan and tell the airplane absolutely everything it needs to know to be able to accomplish the flight properly. Until then, I do want to remind you, if you got some value from this video, to please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get more Microsoft Flight Sim content. I publish a new video every two weeks with tips, tricks, and tutorials for newcomers to the world of Flight Sim. Hopefully you'll stick around for all of that, and I'll see you in the next video.